Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online Anime Review. This one's going to be for episode 6, which is called SAO Loser. And this was a very interesting episode. Um, I, it probably is one of my favourites because we, we finally got like a good amount of, uh, I suppose, character focus, kind of plot progression stuff. I've loved the action from the previous episodes, but we have been a little lacking in... Um, the, the character department and I felt like this episode not really having any action really apart from kind of recap little stuff um, worked because we got to we got a we got a good insight into I suppose what the plot around the second squad jam really is uh, a lot of this was focused uh, on the real life characters we got to meet M in real life we got a lot of Karen in real life um, Got to meet the gymnastics club and further setting up like stuff about uh, Pito Hui in real life. So I think this episode accomplished a lot and makes this second squad jam really, really interesting to see how they do it. It looks like there's going to be more teams, there's going to be like qualifying rounds. Um, but obviously, in the end, it's going to come down to Karen's team, I assume the gymnastics team, as well as Pito Hui's team. And I think. That's the most interesting part of this, is that they use this episode to set up a, I suppose, more serious and dramatic kind of uh, plot, I suppose, consequences for what's going to happen with the second squad jam, and um, in that Pito Hui, they're really, really, really trying to emphasize how crazy she is, in that she actively wants to play a death game, but it's all about her like she, she doesn't want to put anyone else at risk but it seems like she doesn't have a problem with putting kind of M in this or at least threatening him but the focus is that she wants that thrill of being in a game where if she loses in the game she dies in real life she didn't get that with SAO and I thought that was a very cool reveal that she played the beta but something came up last minute that stopped her from participating in the game as it initially came out, as it was released. So she completely missed out on SAO. And the, and instead of that being like a relief for someone, it ended up being this regret for her and that she, she really wanted to be involved in that sort of a game and has been kind of trying to find something like that since. Um, and I suppose that's why she potentially puts these kind of higher stakes on things as we see in, in the previous episodes of like, threatening M in that way to get a little bit more of a thrill out of it um, and here going as far as to say that for Squad Jam 2 if she doesn't win she'll kill herself in real life um, and I suppose M too um, but no one else is at risk but it is still this kind of pretty crazy thing that she's kind of uh, concocted up here basically um, and I'm very, very interested to see once we meet um, Peter Hui in real life. Is her character being exaggerated at all because of like who M is, and that like M tends to, I suppose, maybe be a little bit of a kind of scaredy cat almost as a character, and maybe over exaggerate how crazy she is, um, or is she actually like that because? Everyone, I think, is going with the speculation that in real life she's Elsa, and that makes, I think, complete sense. Um, so, what what's the situation here in that I'm assuming the reason she missed the launch of the game was probably something to do with like her big break as like a, a singer and really kind of stepping out like that. That's probably why she missed the start of the game. And is I almost get the impression she's sort of resentful about her kind of success in that... Obviously, she's successful, so that's great, but she's missed out on these other things that she wants to do because of that. So, um, we get the idea that this has come up here. She, she sort of calmed down since the SAO incident, but what's brought it back again is that she was so excited by like Len's performance in the Squad Jam 1 that it's brought back those kind of impulses with her of like wanting a really dramatic, intense game. And so that's why she's putting herself on the line for Squad Jam 2. And I love how by the end of the episode, they they get Karen involved in this, that she doesn't want Peter Hui to be killed. And they link it to the, the promise that they made to each other, that being that Len will get good enough, and one day the idea is that they'll fight, 
if Len wins, they'll meet in real life. And so combining both of these things together, it effectively puts the rules of this kind of uh, battle at the end as being that if anyone else except uh, Len kills Pitohui, she'll commit suicide. But if it is Len to do it, they'll actually meet up in real life. And that's kind of been what the series has kind of been leading towards, especially in the background, if it is Elsa. And L Len, Karen has sent that letter, which effectively has revealed her identity to Pito Hui. And I assume that's ultimately how um, M knows who Karen is in real life and why he's able to actually meet up with her in this way. Um, in that... Like, I think this episode definitely makes you question what exactly his role is with Elsa Pitohui. Manager, perhaps? But, like, he almost seems, like, a little too young to be, like, her manager. So it's almost, like, says that, like, he loves her. So, like, it could be some weird family thing of, like, him kind of just saying that. Um, if it is, like, his sister. Or else it is, like, he's this kind of crazy manager who somehow kind of become involved in this. I'd be a bit shocked if it's just like super fan type thing and he only has this sort of minor connection to her and um, because they're both good at the game but we'll have to wait and see I, I like the mystery of like there's still there's still reveals to come out about M and um, Peter Hui so um, the 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 rest of the episode um, I, I still like in that they, they finally I suppose established what exactly was going on at the end of episode one with the gymnastics club girls meeting up with uh, Karen in her house and that like, okay, they are just reviewing the tournament and they want to know, like, Len's thoughts on how she went about, I suppose, taking out their whole group in that they're really, really impressed with her. They want there to be another squad jam so that they can face her again. And they sort of did a good job, I think, at setting up in this episode that Karen isn't, like, overly interested in taking part in another tournament as good as she was she doesn't seem to have that drive to like immediately enter another tournament and prove herself as like the best player she participated in this because you know Peter we sort of drove her to do it and now she's in the situation where she has this even more intense reason to succeed and basically win squad jam 2 and that's going to be really interesting to see like how she sort of skills up going into the next tournament because the big thing is that Peter is entering this tournament and it they sort of heavily imply that M is going to be on Peter Wee's team and that they're going to fight against um at land as hard as they can M even says that as much as he wants to save her it's not going to be the fight that Peter Wee wants if he doesn't fight as hard as well um so it, it sets up the idea of like who's going to be on Karen's team and Obviously, she gets her friend Miku involved, which I think was, you know, you expected that to happen, I think, because she's good at games, they haven't really played yet, so it's going to be this kind of important character reveal when, once we see her participate, but is it just going to be another two-man team? Um, is this squad jam just going to be teams of two, or are, are they going to go with the team of six as it was before, or will they go bigger than that so that you can have the six girls from the that team, the gymnastics club team, and then have uh, Karen and Miku just join that and have it be squads of eight. I I don't think they'll do that because I, I think they do want to continue on with the the rivalry of like Karen with the gymnastics club girls um, in that they w want to have that rematch. And it gives a, a reason for like going into this fight. The, the only thing going on isn't, it's, it's not the... The Peter Hui Len stuff isn't the only thing going on here. It is the gymnastics club's girls wanting to like redeem themselves also. And then I assume they'll probably want to introduce some other teams that are notable. But you know, it, we, we only have, what, 12 or 13 episodes. So there's only a couple left. And I think they have a lot to do with the main plot. So, you know, it'll just be about how interesting they manage to quickly introduce the teams that are going to get taken out, I suppose, early on. And um, so... I, uh, that that was I think really well done and I suppose the 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 M reveal um how how was that um I thought it was interesting like we saw this character in the preview I I didn't immediately jump to it being M but it was like in the back of my mind that it could have been it turned out to be the case and it's one of those ones where like okay he's actually like a little bit more 
calmer in real life. Like, was the craziness of M at the end of the first Squad Jam made it seem like he's this crazy character. And as much as Karen says that, like, okay, um, uh, Peter Hui and M are both crazy, even like in real life, so it seems. Uh, he seemed a little bit more composed while still being a bit kind of, I suppose, overly intense, overly dramatic, but um, still, like, it, it it was a bit different than you expected, and I don't think you kind of quite expected him to be as young as he was, um, I kind of looked that way, given what his avatar looked like, but I think that's what this show is going for, whereas um, the normal SAO has always gone for, like, the characters' avatars look exactly like them, um, because that's what they want to do. They want to create the realism from the real world into the game. Here, it's trying to emphasize the kind of fantasy element of like your avatar can be anything in the game because it's not as serious, which I think works. The difference works for both shows here of having like the gymnastics club girls be these kind of tiny, you know, like uh, people in like middle school or whatever it was, and yet their avatars are like huge powerful women and and you know Karen being tall in real life Len being kind of tiny in the game and M being normal like just a, a normal guy basically in real life but his avatar being this huge bulky guy and I suppose that if it is Elsa I think that what we've seen of Elsa it makes her seem like a very kind of small kind of cute kind of girl so I suppose that's a huge contrast between the way Peter Wee looks. Um, so, um, I'm very, very interested to see. Like, I think that just that scene of Karen meeting Elsa in real life is going to be a a big scene when we get to it. Because obviously, I, I assume they're setting up that the height difference is going to be like incredible between them, probably. Um, and just how you do character development for Pito Hui to, I suppose, potentially get her out of this kind of needing to be involved in a death game situation. And I think what they're maybe going to lean towards is that um, kind of Pito Hui taking on this sort of mentor role with Len to get her to the point where Len can beat Pito Hui is going to be a more satisfying thing for Pito Hui than getting the thrill of some kind of... Uh, like really intense fight that it means more to her that she has managed to sort of guide and push Len to be as strong as she could be and maybe the the mentorship the friendship that they have kind of means more than her kind of uh, statement of wanting to like kill herself if she's killed by anyone else in the tournament and um, so I, I, I think that that talk that M and uh, Karen had was I think really really kind of intriguing and it, it was a scene that that needed to happen to sort of add more on like Karen's side and make the squad jam actually this um, intense kind of final battle that we're really going into that there's a desire now for her from her side to really you know commit to doing this the first squad jam sort of uh, pushed her to kind of get to her limits now she's going to have to go beyond them and actually really you know, I suppose lead a team now that she's not going to have M on her team to, to victory, so uh, that's where, is it just going to be the two of them, or will we find other characters to join the team is, is going to be the the big one and um, we obviously see earlier on in the episode in GGO she does uh, buy another P-Chan, which I thought, I thought was a cool little scene showing how much she cares about the gun um, and then I assume we'll get a little bit of a, like a kind of equ equipment kind of focus uh, going into the next episode with the second squad jam of just you obviously are going to have to establish what type of a, a character uh, Miku plays in the game plus if Len is going to have to be um, the leader again I assume she's probably going to have to have a couple of other like pieces of equipment with her I assume she'll have the typical grenade some sort of a handgun as backup and the the knife of some sort but will there be anything else special to add a a bit more to what's going on here and um, in that I, I, I think they will want to set up potentially some sort of a some sort of a thing that when we get to the final battle which I assume is going to be Peter Hui 101 versus Len it'll be some like special thing that Len's brought in that Peter Hui couldn't prepare for and it will show like her growth in some way 
that said, they could just do it kind of stock standard, whatever gun Pito Hui has versus um, uh, Pichan, and just do that in the end. But um, yeah, I, I, I really did enjoy this episode. I thought it was a um, really good setup, getting the, the character stuff in place. And I hope they don't just focus on the action. I hope they continue this trend of like there actually being a bit of a intensity going on here. But I wouldn't mind it too much if they also sort of diminished the intensity in the squad jam as well in that if they kind of do by the end of it sort of make it out that like okay also isn't really as crazy as um peter we isn't really as crazy as m is saying she's more just like she has that personality where she like talks really big and kind of like makes these threats to kill people but she doesn't actually mean it it's just kind of intensity coming out um I wouldn't really mind that and it was just this kind of joke misinterpretation that sort of caused Karen to be more intense in the fight. But uh, yeah, that's most of my thoughts on episode 6. In the comments let me know what your thoughts were on the episode. But uh, yeah, that's been the review. Thanks for watching and bye.